who was your first, not your first client, but your first whale? What was that big one? What was the one that allowed you to get bigger office, hire a bigger team? My first real big consumer win was in 2004, was Evian Water. I remember I got the call like um, Christmas Eve, it was literally Christmas, December 24th, two, three, four o'clock. So you're only in business a year at this point. I'm in business a year. Okay. It was Christmas Eve, had to be three, four o'clock, and um, phone rings and you know the guy says this, I remember, the guy says this is Ray Crockett from Coca-Cola. You know, I want to talk to you about, you know, do impossible work for Coca-Cola. I said, wow, okay, great. How can I help you, sir? Um, at the time, Evian, it might still be, Evian was a product distributed by Coca-Cola. So Coca-Cola handled all marketing for our Evian water. He said, we've heard about you. I can't tell you from who, but we're going to be in New York next week and we're meeting a small group of agencies. We'd like to meet you for Evian water. I said, wow, awesome. That's insane. How big is your company at this point? 10 people, 15 people. Really? 10, 15 people. It was, it was Christmas Eve 2004. We're two, year, two years, probably about 10, 15 people. So that's the, that's the whale. That's the first one. That Evian was the to... first, oh my goodness, client. I mean, there was others that you know about. Well, of course. But in terms of a consumer brand, Evian was the first whale. I think they were about... 300,000 a year, I want to say. It was about 25,000 a month. Um, and it was Evian Water. No, you know, I don't need to explain to anybody in the room. You know, anybody knows what Evian Water is. Huge client. Huge client, marquee brand. And I remember I went into the pitch, and they're talking to me about, there was a French guy, and the, this guy who was you know, a senior executive in marketing at Coca-Cola, keeps talking about how Evian's a luxury brand, Evian's a luxury brand, Evian's fine French, fine this, fine that. <laughs> And I said to him, I cut him off, and I said to him, I'm a New Yorker, the only place I ever see Evian is in Dwayne Reed next to toilet paper. Can I stop you there? Because it brings me back to a question I asked you earlier. Clients always walk in the office, and they have their own vision for what their brand represents. And you have to sometimes give the reality and come up with a strategy that meets them in the middle. I was with, I'm telling you, I was with one other person, and they give me this whole presentation. Evian's a luxury, fine, French, authentic, wonderful European brand. And I remember I cut the guy off. There was like six people in the room. And I said, I live in New York City. I only see your brand in Dwayne Reed. I don't know what it was at that point. Mm -hmm. Next to toilet paper and tampons. That's a luxury <laughs> brand. <laughs> Half of them laughed. I remember a few of them like, gave me dirty looks, like, who are you to say this? I won that business when I said that. Because nobody else was saying to them, Evian, again, at that, Evian now looks like this, but Evian at that point 15 years ago was really, you know, again, it was, it was like great Poupon. You know, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was like, wow. <laughs> and when I said to them, and then they gave me this whole long answer about how, well, our distribution is screwed up. We want to be in fine restaurants, but we're actually in pharmacies because, and I said, again, I repeated it. That was it. I won the business at that point. Nothing else mattered because nobody else was telling them that. There was a very aggressive CMO who hired us. The guy had balls. The guy wanted to take chances, a great CEO, and they really wanted to make Evian grow. Evian was my largest client for five, six years, probably was a million dollar account for five, six years, and um, was a great client. At the time, they were the largest sponsor of the US Open. Um, they allowed us to touch celebrities. They allowed us to touch a lot of different things. But I would tell you, in retrospect, Evian was probably my biggest wow client. And it's so funny. Now I'll say it, I hated Evian water. <laughs> I drink a lot of water. And so I used to keep Poland Spring on my desk, but I would always rip off the labels and pour it into Evian, <laughs> and pour it into Evian bottles. And, um, but I wouldn't let non-Evian brands really into my office. And so I used to pour it, and I hated the taste of it. I still hate the taste of it. But back then, I remember I, I, I said to my wife, to my ex-wife, my wife at the time, we only got to buy Evian water at home. And after like three days, I was like, nah, change that. <laughs> 
this leads to an important question because somebody's going to watch this and they want to win business. You took a major risk by being truthful, by telling heads of industry the truth about their brand. Would you recommend that for people who are watching this and are trying to win business and they, they might need that client to come on board, but they're too afraid to say what they really feel because that could be the difference between going out of business or hiring a couple more um, I think you gotta workers. know, I think you have to know who you are. I think I know who I am. I knew who I was then and I know who I am now. And I think that I knew that I wasn't gonna win a fine, this boy from the Bronx wasn't gonna win a fine European brand. I just wasn't. I was not gonna, I didn't vacation in the south of France like the other PR firms that when they were growing up, their parents took them. My, my kids are growing up in the south of France. My kids go to the south of France every summer. My kids today, when they go pitch some fancy brand in 10, 20 years, they'll know what they're talking about from an authenticity real. They're going to private schools in Manhattan. They're going up much differently than I did. Absolutely. Okay? And I'm happy that they are. And I hope my grandkids will grow up even better than my kids. But I knew that I couldn't win. I, my, my strength at that point was in being authentic, real, and hardworking. And in retrospect, there was a really hungry CEO there who wanted to take chances. Those people, the CEO and the CMO, hired me because they saw I was different than the fold. And by the way, the initial contract was something like six weeks. It was a six-week gig with Evian. It wasn't, hey, be our agency of record. And turned into five, six years. It turned into six years, I think. And I survived two CEO changes. But that was a six-week gig that I got. And so, by the way, you know, people think, you know, that was the moment. Yeah, that wise-ass comment was helpful. But that wise-ass comment didn't keep the client for six years. That wise ass comment opens the door. It opens the ability to have the opportunity. So do I think that people should tell the truth? Yeah, but I think you also have to be prepared for the consequences. In other words, you know, I remember many things in childhood getting thrown out of classes and doing this and doing that, but I was prepared for the consequences. I knew that my mother would tell me after I told the teacher that, that it was okay. If other parents wouldn't, the child has to think of, what are the consequences in my home? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I think everybody has to have the ability to internalize. It goes back to brands also. You have to internalize who you are. You have to internalize what your strengths are, what you're good at, what you're not good at, and what you're real about. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.